So I completely forgot to show you guys what I ate for the first th meal of the day, well, part of the first meal of the day. Um, it had strawberries, plantain, it had uh, walnuts, raisins, and banana. And it was really good. It's good for that sweet tooth. You can eat it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. If I can find a way, I'll insert a picture. But if not, if you follow me on Instagram, then you will see that I posted it on there. I post a lot of stuff at Infinite Nature number one on Instagram. Or on Twitter at the same screen name. Um, Infinite Nature one or Infinite Nature for Facebook. And then here's some tea or that I'm about to drink. And then also, I got this because I was still hungry which is bananas tahini it looks kind of crazy I know but the tahini got all this at the bottom it's we're almost out of it so it's all caked up so it was a struggle getting it out but um it's just raisins tahini banana and um, cinnamon and we use the raw tahini this art artisana I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Artisana Organics. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. We are about to go to the store to get recipes for two um, dishes that we plan on making. First one I'm going to make today is a pasta, to, tomato pasta. That's a favorite. Hamilton loves that one. And then the second one is the buffalo cauliflower. He wants to make, he wants that. So we're going to have those two. So I look forward to that. So I just got back from the store and what I'm doing now is I'm prepping the meal together to do the tomato uh, sauce pasta which is one of my favorite dishes um, I've always loved doing uh, love spaghetti and so I'm excited to show you how I do this so um, I got it from Walterian uh, you can google that and I have the tomatoes and the sun-dried tomatoes this was Roma tomatoes and sun-dried tomatoes along with the kelp um, garlic um, here is the olive oil that I'm going to be putting in it and also the sea salt and the basil, dried basil. Um, and normally I would use oregano because the recipe that I got it from, this is oregano or basil, but I tried basil this time. And I find that basil tastes a little bit more, I like it better than the oregano, even though I love oregano. But here I'm just talking about how this is one of my favorite meals to make. I've always loved pasta since I was a little child. And I've missed it. And I personally don't care for the um, the starchy noodles that like the, um, the squat, um, like squash or the, yeah, like using something like squash or zucchini or whatever. So I love the kelp because the kelp is to me just, it's easier to digest. It's, you know, it's not as starchy for me. So I love it. I, I really love it. And it's not hard to get it soft. I, I like the softness of it. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting open the kelp packaging. And you can get this at your local Whole Foods. I was attempting to show the packaging, but unfortunately you can't see it. But uh, but um, you can get this at any health food store. Just go to the aisle where they have like the, the seaweed and things like that where they have like the Asian um, the Asian stuff at in the grocery store like that's where you normally find in, a, in the health food stores so what I'm doing here is I am um, cutting up cutting up the the kelp noodles and separating it because it, when it comes out the packaging it comes very clumpy it doesn't really taste like much when you're when it's just like that and it does have like a salty taste to it it comes with inside of a liquid it has like a liquid salty it's like liquid and salty in um, the packaging so yeah 
So I'm just cutting it up because I, I, I don't like clumpy pasta. Never did, even when I ate regular pasta, like cooked pasta. I never liked it when it clumped up and things like that. So I'm separating it and, and also making it not too short. I mean, not too short, but not too long, too. I don't like super long pasta. I want it to be easy to eat for me personally. And I use two package, packages because we want to get at least a couple of servings out of this each. You know, I want to make sure that we get full off the meal. So I use two packaging. And with the Rotarian, with that tomato sauce um, recipe, it's smaller. The, the servings are smaller than what I would like. So I always tweak it to where it is enough for, for me to make whatever it is I'm making. So here I am just continue, continuously um, cutting it up because it comes really munched up. And it's hard and crunchy to me. I don't like that hard crunchiness, which is why personally I don't care for that starchy noodles like zucchini you know, squash or whatever like that. Or It's too hard for me. So I love, 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 love the kelp. And what really makes it soft is the sitting in the sauce. But the reason why I'm putting it in the warm water is, to, you know, while I'm doing other things such as cutting up other vegetables and making the um, tomato sauce, it can just sit and it does soften up a little bit, but I wouldn't depend solely on that. Because the way that I, I used to eat pasta is that I would normally eat, put the sauce on top of the pasta, but... I never tried it to where you, you let the kelp sit for a very long. Actually, I have, and it, it still was not as soft as I wanted it to be. So I think that mixing the sauce and the pasta is the best for me personally. Because I want it to be soft like a noodle, like an actual noodle. But here, I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm waiting for the water to get warm enough for me to put the, put the water in the bowl of kelp. So, it's taking longer than I anticipated. It's interesting going back watching how, how everything looks and how the video can be so long. But, um, this is real cool. So here I'm just letting it sit because it's a big bowl. So I'm letting it fill all the way up. Well, not all the way up to the top, but you know, enough to that it's covered. And now I'm just getting everything prepared for the tomato sauce. So I'm about to start on making the tomato sauce. Before I start on that, I'm showing the kelp noodles. Um, it's I'm attempting to show it in the bowl and that it's going to be sitting there while I get everything else prepped in a way. Um, but I, like I said before, I got the recipe from um, the Rotarian and that's me showing the, the actual packaging since I couldn't really see it previously. Um, but there go the Vitamix. Um, I might put everything in the blender to get it ready to go but first I'm cutting up the Roma tomatoes it's already been rinsed and everything so I'm cutting them up so it could just be easier to blend it in the Vitamix and um, I don't remember how many I used I know I used at least maybe four or five um, but like I said before when it comes to the amount of um, the measurements I really, when it comes to measurements, period, I really do not uh, use exact, I don't really keep track of measurements, but I just make sure that it is enough. So um, I looked at the measurements that was on the recipe and I kind of correlate that. So I would say that that's probably like at least four, maybe four cups of, um, of to fresh tomatoes probably. And look at me, I actually dropped a piece of it on the floor and it splat. I was like, dang it. And because I was wearing white and I was like, I'm not wasting that little piece of tomato. I'm about to rinse it off. You, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm rinsing that off. <laughs> and then I was all wiping up the, uh, the, the mess. I was just like, gosh darn it. <laughs> but, um, 
here I go I'm putting the garlic in there so I put more garlic than what what the recipe says because I'm using more um, and here I'm trying to debate on whether how much I should use how much of each ingredients I should use based upon me putting more tomatoes and things in there so I'm opening up the packaging and having a hard time because I'm just ripping it a piece apart <laughs> I'm just ripping it apart. Um, so, this right here, this is normally not the sun dried tomatoes we get. We normally get the ones without the. Uh, we, I forgot the name of the brand. See, I'm always forgetting. I'm forgetting all the little brands that we buy, but this was cheaper because we were. I was buying more. I was like, you know what? I'm just getting the cheaper one, the cheaper Whole Foods brand one, since I'm using so much ingredients and I'm just chopping it away chop chop normally you're supposed to base upon the ingredients soak this in olive oil pre-soak it in olive oil but we I was hungry and we had just got back from getting all the ingredients so I was just like you know what there's already olive oil in the actual ingredients that you would have to put in the sauce on top of soaking it in um, soaking the uh, sun-dried tomatoes in the um in the olive oil so i was just like you know what it's all right plus is the sun-dried tomatoes these are, are re relatively soft so i was just like whatever we're going to skip that step so that's just me chopping it up because the ingredients say it's to chop it up so that's what i was doing plus it'll make it easier as as i'm blending everything all the ingredients together so um I definitely use a good amount. It's probably at least a cup or so of sun-dried tomatoes, or uh, almost a cup. So there, I got the olive oil, and um, I pretty much maybe tripled the, doubled or tripled the amount of um, measurements. So here, I probably like doubled, doubled it, maybe a little over double, but not more not like four times or whatever and then I'm putting in the basil and like I mentioned previously the basil I like that better um than the oregano even though I love oregano it seemed like the basil was more it's not as to me it's not as bitter as, as uh the basil is not as bitter as the oregano so for both of those I believe I used I probably I use I believe three te te teaspoons for the basil and then like two tablespoons for the olive oil. I believe. Don't quote me on that. But then I just use some sea salt to taste. I didn't use that much. It may have looked like it, but I really didn't use that much sea salt. So now I'm getting everything set up to do the sauce to blend it all together. So now I am prepping the vegetables that I'm putting in the pasta. Well, um, oh yes, I put broccoli in there and I'm re-rinsing. I rinsed it off beforehand, but I'm rinsing it again. And then I have leftover yellow pepper, so I wanted to use the rest of that. Um, so that can have more color in the pasta because one thing I noticed is that um, that red the, the sauce becomes super duper, I mean, the, the pasta is super duper red. And I'm now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably not so much I can do to get more color from it, only because the kelp noodles are completely clear. So it's like the most dominant thing is the red. So that's part of the reason why I like, I want, I like to put different colors. It's because one thing with raw food that I love that I noticed that stands out is that it's so colorful. The colors when it comes to the salads, the different salads, the different ingredients, different things that you that that I see. If you look at um, someone's dish that is raw, you'll notice it's always colorful, and that's what I love, and that's why it's called live food. So what I'm doing here is just cutting up the um, broccoli into you know smaller pieces. The last time I did this, I, de I used mushrooms 
and onions and dehydrated them because I thought it would be cool. Um, that's one of the things that I love about pasta too is adding like mushrooms and stuff like that. But I didn't do it this time. All I did was just put pep the real yellow pepper in the broccoli. So what I'm doing here is cutting up the yellow pepper now. You can't really see it. I didn't have the, the camera low enough, but I'm cutting up yellow pepper right now. Um, so here I go, just chopping away. It's a real, this is a real easy meal, like I mentioned before. Doesn't take that long to make at all. The most you're doing is just mixing the ingredients for the sauce and blending it and then chopping up whatever vegetables if you even want vegetables in it um, or any other additional or food or whatever <laughs> um, I never thought about it but you could probably even put like tomatoes in there you know if you want it but to me it's just it has a lot of tomatoes in there already so I mean, tomato overload, but you saw I had the broccoli and the yellow pepper. So what I'm doing now, what am I trying to do? Oh, the strand. So now I am about to um, strain the kelp noodles in the water, from the water. Um, strain that. Normally, now that I think about it, I normally don't do that. I normally would start on the salad because I always eat this with salad I would normally start the salad first get the salad all prepped in the way and then I would um, like at least and then I would go ahead and drain it strain it and allow the sauce to sit that's normally what I would do but this time you know it doesn't matter it all worked out regardless <laughs> you know you can do it whatever way you want it to do so what I'm doing is straining the kelp noodles, trying to make sure I get all the water out of it so it's not so watery, more saucy than watery. I wish I would have known that I didn't have the, the camera up down low enough so you can see what I was doing. But I'm pouring the kelp noodles back into the big red bowl and everything and making sure I got all the water out of it there's not a whole bunch of water and now it looks like I'm about to get the pepper and the broccoli and put it in the kelp noodles put it on top and I'm sure I'm going to show you how that looks also but I'm just making sure that I get everything in the bowl And now I'm clearing it out so I can put the bowl back up. And then from there, what am I doing? It's funny trying to see what I'm doing next. Okay, I'm about to put the sauce on. I now I want to show you how it looks with the kelp, the broccoli, and the pepper chopped up. You could put other ingredients, mushrooms. I was really debating on whether I should put mushrooms in there. Like, just put it in there raw. It was saucy enough to where I could put it in there. Because I don't like my mushrooms. Like, mushrooms raw, it got to be a certain way for me. That's me thinking about whether I should put mushrooms in there or not. <laughs> I was like, nah. I don't feel like doing that right now. So then I just pour the sauce in there. And for me, I, don't, I to be honest with you, well, after I put all the sauce in there, I just, you'll see what I'm about to do in a minute. But I'm up there trying to scrape all of the um, sauce in there as much as I could in there. I tell you, my husband is the best scraper of all things. His mom was like a baker, so growing up, he was he 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 knew how to scrape really well. He's like the best scraper ever. So I'm always like, I'm leaving too much. So here I go with that. So I'm gonna use my hands. It's easier to use my hands. <laughs> That's the part I was talking about. It's easier to just use my hands with that. 
just to make sure I get all of it because I don't want it. I don't want to discriminate against any of the noodles. I want everything to be mixed completely in there. So that's what I'm doing. Now I think I splash them on my on my shirt again. <laughs> but I was making sure I got everything mixed in. See, yep, yeah, I had splashed some on my shirt. I'm like, damn it. See, that's the thing about wearing white. But I'm just mixing it, mixing it, mixing it, mixing it. And I also do it with the um, the tongs. We use tongs all the time. But when it comes to the pasta, to me, it's just easier just to mix, to use the hands. And of course, I wash my hands afterwards and everything. And make sure it's all clean. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about my, I'm worried about my, my white clothes. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> oh, boy. So now I'm, I'm washing my hands. And then, got the tongs. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. And now I want to taste test it. Now by this point, at this point, it's still not super duper soft yet. It's still crunchy, but I do it for the taste. It tastes really good. It was good. I liked it. It was, the, the taste was perfect. All I'm doing is... Um, now all I got to do is just let it sit and let it get softened and it's all good. So now I'm showing you what it looks like. You know, it does look like pasta, you see? Now I just imagine if I would have mushrooms in it, but you know that red always overpowers. But there you go. Alright, so now I'm doing a kale salad with my favorite ingredients. We're using sun-dried tomato. We have the organic cherry tomatoes. So here's the sun dried tomatoes. Organic cherry tomatoes. This is just, we got some, we normally don't get this brand. This is just a Kroger olives. Some avocado, two avocados. Let's put this down. Cilantro. So now I'm starting chopping up all of the vegetables and fruit or whatnot in for the salad. Um, I always have a salad with every meal that I have. Um, so I have like chopping up the cilantro, green onion, raisins, sun-dried tomatoes, tomatoes, if I didn't say that, um, lime, avocado. So that's what I'm doing right here. Um, I love the salad like that. To me, it's like a, a great combination of flavors. So it's one of my like favorite signature salads that I always make for pretty much almost every meal. Um, and, so, and I do put, sometimes I put apple cider vinegar in it or balsamic vinegar because I really like that vinegary taste. So here I'm chopping up the tomatoes. I'm just putting all the ingredients in. Um, the, um, the big salad bowl that we have and I love um, the little cherry tomatoes this one's a, I don't know if this is cherry this is a little bit bigger but but I love the cherry tomatoes it's tasty tasty and let's see what I'm on next now I'm opening the avocado and we did have we do have an avocado opener um, that we got for our wedding for a wedding gift which was very great um but we used it so much that it like that it kind of it breaks it broke it broke apart not broke apart we still can use it but it's not like it used to be so um i, I prefer to you do it this way with the knife and just cutting up the avocado and scooping it out with a spoon personally but i know my husband he likes using that little avocado um, opener scraper thing 
for me. Um, I love avocado. Avocado is a great source of um, protein. Um, pretty much eat it every single day. Eat it by itself. Eat it with anything. And then I have the olives. Um, it's already was chopped up. It came chopped up. But I'd like to chop it up even more. So that's what I did with that. Oh, you can see it way better now. And then I put some raisins in there. I like putting raisins in my salad also. And what am I doing? Oh, I had to get a lime. Yeah, like I mentioned before, lime is, um, you don't necessarily have to use salad dressings. You can make your own salad dressings or you can use lime, you know, by itself. I also put apple cider vinegar in it with that sometimes and without it sometimes just depending I put, I put apple cider vinegar in it with this this time you know um but that's the result of it so right here i'm just cutting up the kale um i'm taking off the stems because it's very tough to eat like that and that's it so here is the salad and here is the pasta so here is the finished product and we're ready to eat so here is my last snack of the day I actually had some of this earlier. This is something my husband made. It's like a fruit bowl with apples. Apples and strawberries, bananas, walnuts, and what's this on the side? Raisins, cinnamon, and that's almond butter. Oh, almond butter. So this looks like it's going to be tasty. So I had this earlier. This um, After my meal, I had this a little maybe like an hour or so after that that was like late afternoon and it's like 10 o'clock at night normally i don't eat that late but um i wanted a snack because i took a nap and i woke back up so this is the end of what i eat in the day and see you again next time when i document this